This is the Palin Update on Mama Grizzly Radio. I'm Kevin Shola in the Narrowgate Security Agency Studios. Truly, there is no way to filter out those who would want to do this country harm with the process that we see in place. America continues to reel from the horrific Muslim terrorist attacks in California. And while the media targets guns and liberal politicians refuse to say Islam, there are thankfully conservatives like Ted Yoho offering solutions and standing up for the safety of America. Today, Congressman Yoho joins us from Florida to discuss San Bernardino, Syrian refugees, and whether an Obama impeachment is still in the cards. Governor Palin's book tour is well-received as thousands flock for a chance to meet the author of Sweet Freedom. An absolutely amazing project highlighting kids with Down syndrome is highlighted by the governor. A brand new installment of Liberty and Legacy with Tamara Colbert is on the way from Texas. And just ahead, our latest edition of Steel Resolve with Sarah Steelman in Missouri. Welcome to the Palin Update on Mama Grizzly Radio. The Palin Update is sponsored by Narrowgate Security Agency. Learn more at Narrowgate.com. Following the slaughter of Americans by Muslim terrorists in California, some common-sense patriots are speaking out, combating not only ISIS and the terrorists themselves, but a lying media and politicians who are blaming seemingly everyone and everything except Islamic terror. Today, a friend from the Sunshine State is here to shine some light on the issues. Always a pleasure to have him on the program, and we welcome him back today from the great state of Florida, Congressman Ted Yoho. Ted Yoho, welcome, sir. How are you? I'm doing great, Kevin. appreciate you having me on. Well, wonderful to have you, as always, always offering great insight. You know, I wish you were Speaker of the House, and uh, it is (laughs) tremendous to have you back here with us. And Obviously, unfortunately, not for the greatest topic in the world, the overall topic, which I do want to talk about what you're doing uh, as far as uh, the refugee situation. I know you've made some moves in that arena, but first let's talk about what everybody's talking about, and that's what went down in San Bernardino, California last week. Uh, Can you tell us uh, first uh, your reaction? And and what I also want to talk about today a little bit is what do you think of the reaction from politicians and from some in the media who still, even after something so cold-blooded, are still afraid to say certain words? They sure are, and I think that's a very dangerous situation. Uh, first, you know, uh, talking about that situation is obviously our hearts and prayers and our thoughts for those families go out to that. But this is a wake-up sign for America. This is on the homeland. This is too close to home. Uh, it is here, and it has. it's something that has to be dealt with. And if you can't identify what it is, you can't deal with it. And, uh, you know, being a veterinarian, we had a diagnosed problem, and it's, it's, it's very clear, cut and dry. It's radical Islamic uh, terrorism, and it's here, and we need to deal with it. Um, and there's a whole thing, a whole line of things that we have uh, uh, introduced in legislation. Um from putting a pause on Syrian refugees or Middle Eastern refugees coming over here uh, until we can certify and verify that these people are who they are and that they're safe to come into this country. Uh, The visa waiver program for people that uh, um, from the 38 countries that if they have a Western passport, they can come into our country. Uh, We're going to put a pause on that until we do the proper screening and the countries they come from to meet the biometrics that we um, put in place. And I think what I find most unconscionable are the media refusing to call it what it is and the president coming out and attacking the guns, you know, and telling, well, we've got to, you know, get these guns taken care of. At a time when we have radical Islamic jihadists, ISIS people in our country, performing these things, it's not the gun problem of, the, of American citizens. It's um, these people want to come in and do us harm. And sadly, people are buying into the rhetoric. Uh, some are, some are not, obviously, and a lot of uh, great Americans speaking out uh, for common sense, which a lot of this has to do with uh, usually no matter how serious or mild the issue may be. But 
you look at this particular situation and you talk about the blaming of guns. Meantime, we've seen many attacks uh, in recent times, uh, whether in the U.S. or abroad, uh, using other weapons, other means. I mean, to to think that a gun and to come out with these uh, blanket statements about the NRA uh, coming out after this situation, I mean, it's really unbelievable, or I should say it's not unbelievable, but it's still very shocking when you see this and ghoulish, really. I saw someone use that word the other day, and I really thought that hit the nail on the head because what you see is people in Washington and elsewhere in the media waiting for a tragedy, and then when it comes, capitalizing on it to try to push an old agenda. They really do, and, it, you know, it is a shame, and it's, um, um, you know, I hate to think that our politics has fallen to that, but, you know, you go back to what Rahm Emanuel said, that, you know, you never want a, um, a crisis to go to waste, and, you know, it is ghoulish. It's, it's very morbid. We need to address the fact that the ISIS organization is the most well-funded terrorist organization the world's ever seen. They have over a billion dollars in assets. They have a, a revenue stream from um, oil, narcotics, human trafficking, arms sales, extortion. Um, and this has got to be dealt with. And you got to look at where ISIS came from. ISIS came from the Obama policies of pulling out of Iraq and Afghanistan against the general's uh, recommendations. And they left a void, and that void was filled by the, the people that uh, al-Qaeda al didn't want to deal with because they were so radical, but they had a safe haven. And they also had a safe haven in Libya because of the no-fly zones. That was created by Hillary Clinton. That was her baby. She wanted the no-fly zones in, uh, in uh, Libya, led to the downfall of Gaddafi. Now they have three uh, different areas in Libya where ISIS has their training camps or recruiting areas, and they have operational um, centers in Libya. And this is a, a, a direct result of the Clinton-Obama uh, foreign policy and their, you know, her being Secretary of State. And I hope people take this serious and, and really look into this because she wants to be President of the United States. And I think it's just, it, it, it would be a disaster. Um, if you look at what the role of the federal government is, its number one role is for the to provide for the common defense of the United States of America. And we need to look at securing our border. We need to look at enforcing laws on the book. The people that are here that shouldn't be here, we need to have a way of vetting them and screening them. If they have a Middle Eastern background that we can't verify, they need to be out of the country. Uh, but more importantly, we need to put a pause on the Syrian refugees and Middle Eastern refugees that are coming here because, according to Jay Johnson of the Department of Homeland Security and Director Kumi of the FBI, they have no way of verifying who these people are. So I think it would be prudent at this point in time in our country's history for our president to do what's best for the homeland. And he, he accuses the Republicans of being afraid of women and children. I'm concerned of women and children, and those are the women and children in my country. My wife, my daughters, your your children, your families. We should be concerned about that before we worry about somebody else.